I can't believe we're talking about branched chain amino acids again. Like, thought this was put to bed, but now there's some new evidence that makes us think that maybe there is some benefit to branched chain amino acids after all, after we've all thrown them under the bus in the fitness community, right? What's interesting is that this new paper that came out in 2024, the way that it makes BCAAs look on the surface at face value, it actually makes it look like it's just confirming what we all thought, that leucine or branched chain amino acids pretty much do nothing on their own. However, there was a piece of this study that people online are overlooking that is a very interesting piece. And we're gonna talk about exactly what that is because it actually sheds some light in the fact that BCAAs or leucine supplementation might have an interesting benefit independent of protein intake. So we'll talk about that and kind of unpack what it is. So after today's video, I put a link down below for an infrared sauna blanket. A lot of people don't wanna shell out the money for a sauna and I don't blame them. They're gigantic, they're expensive, but an infrared sauna blanket is a way for you to utilize a sauna, but in a very portable and convenient and inexpensive form. So that is a 15% off discount link for Bond Charges infrared sauna blanket. If I am on the road, if I'm traveling, or if I'm just in my gym and I don't have a big sauna in my gym, then I will hop in that thing. I'll use it as a warm up. It makes it feel like my joints are ready to go, but I also break a sweat really quick. Infrared is different from a dry heat sauna. So you a lot of times sweat faster with an infrared because it's, for lack of a better term, kind of heating you up from the inside out versus a sauna that you sit in, like a, a high heat sauna, heating you from the outside in. So this is really cool. You can adjust the heat, plus it's got all kinds of other features, but highly, highly portable and much more affordable than a giant barrel sauna. So use that code down below, Delauer15, for the Barn Charge Sauna Blanket. Okay, so the study was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. And again, at face value, from what most people are talking about, it does kind of make it look like leucine supplementation is somewhat worthless. But let's take a look at the study real quick first. 35 people, so it wasn't a huge study, and they gave them five grams of leucine or a placebo. So two groups, both of them did 10 weeks of resistance training. Throughout the study and after the study, they looked at body composition, they looked at adiponectin levels, they looked at like leptin levels, they looked at just a number of different metrics. Ultimately, what they found is that like visceral fat increased in both groups, probably because they were eating too much, who knows. Okay, there are also no real changes in fat-free mass. Uh, there was an increase in leptin in the leucine group, and that's really the main things. So ultimately, there were no changes in lean body mass. So leucine supplementation, i.e. branched chain amino acids, didn't really do anything for lean body mass. However, we need to look a little bit deeper because there's some serious, I don't wanna call them flaws, but just things with this study that don't make a lot of sense. What we do know about leucine is that leucine on its own doesn't really do anything. The question is, does leucine along with adequate protein actually increase more muscle protein synthesis? If you have leucine and you're already eating enough protein, does it potentially cause more muscle protein synthesis from the protein that you ate? Like if I had branched chain amino acids with a chicken breast, is it gonna elicit more of a muscle protein synthesis response? We'll talk about that later on in this video because there's actually some direct studies that look at just literally that. But what this study didn't do is it didn't give us what these people were eating. There was no dietary information provided. All we know is that there was a three-day dietary recall. That's all we can see from this paper. So we don't know if they were even eating protein at all. Like they could have been eating nothing but like rice, pancakes, and bananas for all we know. We just don't know. So if they weren't getting enough protein, then we know that leucine's not going to do much. So Again, without that information, we can't make a solid statement, and I have to play devil's advocate there. Full disclaimer, like, I'm not the biggest fan of branched chain amino acids. Like, I've been team essential amino acids for years, but I also look at data the way that I probably should look at data, which is in an unbiased way. The other thing that's really interesting about this study is it was looking at untrained pre- and postmenopausal women. That's the thing, okay? So in a lot of cases, in an untrained person, the little things don't matter that much. In an untrained person, what matters most is get into the gym, eat relatively good. 
But as you go more and more down the fitness line and the more trained you become, the more the little slivers of things matter. So what might be a 1% lick of a difference when you're a newbie actually becomes more like a 10% lick of a difference when you're trained, right? So we can't look at these perimenopausal women and say, well, it didn't do anything for them, right? It's just not, we can't take it entirely to the bank. Okay, but we need to look at the real data and we look at some other studies here for just a second. There's one key thing that I wanna make sure that I mention that we are going to come back to that is probably the most important part. That sounds funny, but it is. And that's the fact that the leucine group had increases in leptin. Leptin is critical here. There is data on leptin with muscle. So we're gonna come back to that because that's where people online, they're leaving this out. Okay, they're not talking about that and I think it's important to get the full scope of this study. But first, there was a study back in 2010. It was a big study published in Current Opinions. And it's probably the largest study to date that shows that leucine independently, even taking in long term, does not increase muscle mass, doesn't increase lean body mass. So we're not really surprising anybody with EAAs or BCAAs on that. Like, in the absence of protein, I don't think they're really doing a whole lot. But directly, if you were to take leucine and have enough protein on hand, you probably could get a little increase in muscle protein synthesis. But indirectly, there is a very unique benefit that people don't talk about, okay? And this was published in large data. There were 17 randomized controlled trials, okay, with over 1,400 participants in a study that took a look at leucine supplementation. And what they found is that leucine in older populations didn't seem to really do much for direct lean body mass, but indirectly, there was a very clear and significant, statistically significant and significant increase in grip strength and gait speed. Well, what does that mean? That sounds like you're really just, you're really pulling for it, Thomas. You're really like trying to reach for something. No, grip strength and gait speed are two of the strongest indicators that we look at when it comes down to sarcopenia. Okay, if grip strength goes down and a gait speed slows down, those are very strong predictive indicators and direct indicators of sarcopenia, muscle wasting. So what we're seeing here is that leucine supplementation in large amounts of research increases grip strength and increases gait speed, which means that it may not be increasing lean body mass, but in older people, it might actually be saving their life a little bit. It might actually be helping them preserve muscle and preserve strength more importantly. If they preserve their strength, then secondly, they will preserve their muscle. And this is no denying that, a 17 RCTs, that's big data. But what we have to also ask ourselves is, if someone is getting adequate protein, will taking branched chain amino acids or essential amino acids help at all? And at the end of this video, I will talk about BCAAs versus EAAs and the difference between them and which one you may wanna choose. But first, let's look at this study that looked at food consumption alongside Lucy. This study was published in Clinical Nutrition, pretty broad scale paper too. Okay, they had older individuals consume four grams of leucine with each meal. So three times per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they had four grams of leucine or a placebo. Okay, what they found is that right smack in the beginning, first meal, they noticed there was a slight increase in muscle protein synthesis. But at the end of the study, at two weeks, two weeks in, there were significant increases in post-absorptive muscle protein synthesis. What that means is after the meal, they were having more muscle protein synthesis when leucine was in the equation. And the most important, the most important aspect of this study is that the subjects were meeting the minimum RDA for protein already. So we know they were getting enough protein from their diet. Then when leucine was added on, it had an additional benefit of muscle protein synthesis. So leucine, when added into a diet that has adequate protein, can absolutely, or at least shows promise, to increase muscle protein synthesis, especially in older adults. So for us to just completely throw BCAAs out the window, is a little immature because we do see, okay, if you're eating enough protein, they might help. Do I think, and we're gonna get into this really cool stuff, so do not click off this video yet because we're gonna get into the leptin piece. Do I think that an elite level bodybuilder is going to get a huge benefit out of BCAAs? 
Probably not, because they're eating enough protein. Do I think that an elite level bodybuilder is gonna get some benefit out of essential amino acids? Possibly, if they're in a deficit and they're trying to just get additional protein needs met, I could see that. I think who really benefits from EAAs and BCAAs are older people, people maybe even just over 35 in general, to be honest. Sorry if you're 36, you're older. But with that, you know, it's going to be something that might just help you meet your protein requirements or get more out of your protein without eating more protein. Okay, now let's unpack this 2024 study and talk about the leptin piece. Get ready, because we're gonna go mechanistic for a minute, but this is fascinating stuff. Remember how in the study we saw an increase in leptin in the leucine group and only in the leucine group. Leptin is what is called an adipokine or adipokine potato potato. You know how cytokines are inflammatory cytokines? Well, adipokines are released by fat and they are signaling molecules and they do different things. Leptin is a perfect example. Leptin is secreted by adipose tissue. Well, if we look at another study that was done on mice in the journal Physiology, they took what are called fat-free mice, mice that didn't have any fat on them. And they found that they did not have good strength and they did not have good muscle mass compared to wild-type mice, okay? But when they took these fat-free mice and they made them have an additional 10% body fat, suddenly they had the strength and they had the power and they had the muscle mass. So at first you say, okay, you need to have some fat on you to build muscle or to get stronger. Let's pump the brakes here for just a second. Because when they took these mice and they made it so that they were leptin resistant, meaning leptin could not dock to its site, leptin was useless in the mouse's body. When they added the fat to the mice then, no change. They did not get stronger. They did not build muscle, even though they had the 10% fat on them. Case in point, it's the leptin that is having an impact on the muscle mass. So leptin seems to have a direct impact on the ability to build muscle and build power and strength. And it has to do with a lot of different signaling pathways that are far beyond my pay grade and far beyond most of the PhDs that I talk about. It's pay grade because it's very isolated and nuanced. But if we look at a study that was published in the Chinese Medicine Journal from 2023, we also see literature that shows that leptin is associated with atrophy. So a decrease in leptin, rather, is associated with atrophy. So when leptin levels go down, we tend to see increases in atrophy. And when atrophy occurs, we see increases in leptin receptors. What does this mean? It means as a backup plan, when we start atrophying, we get more leptin receptors to try to catch that precious leptin, which clearly has a role in preserving muscle. So what we're seeing here is that perhaps leucine or BCAAs or EAAs are not what we're after to get gigantic and huge, but they might be really important for muscle preservation, specifically as we get older. I find this fascinating because they're such a dirt cheap supplement, and if you're already getting enough protein in, and you can take in some leucine or essential amino acids or BCAAs, it might help you more. BCAAs, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. So there are three aminos, whereas essential amino acids have all nine essentials, including leucine. The bottom line is with EAAs, you stand a better chance of getting more muscle protein synthesis out of it because you're also supplementing with the aminos that are essential and that are required for muscle protein synthesis in, in the first place, not just the leucine. So BCAAs are isolated aminos that are really good for muscle building, but come to find out, they really don't matter. It's more about the leucine anyway, and then independent of the leucine, it's about what other aminos you get in, in entirety. So you stand a better chance of putting yourself in a positive protein balance by using EAAs than you do with BCAAs. But if leucine is all that you're after, I mean, you could take BCAAs, but you might as well take EAAs. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.